Okay, well, thought I'd take some time to go over the rig that's got me the majority of my fish the latter part of this season, uh, the multi-rig. And the way I tie it might be slightly different from others, uh, just in the way I rig it. Uh, so we're gonna take a few moments to go over the materials that I use. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about the rig. This one right here is the way I tie it for a pop-up. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. The only difference in the way I use this for a bottom bait is the split shot. Uh, I don't put a split shot on when I'm rigging up a bottom bait, but essentially the, the whole rig is the same for pop-ups and bottom baits, just the difference in the split shot. So let's go through the materials and we'll tie up this rig. All right, so let's go through the materials we need to tie this rig. So to start off with, we're gonna use the Ace Camo Core Coated Hook Link in 20 pound. This is the weed pattern. Uh, so it's nice and green, nice mix of greens. Really, uh, really blends in well in the weedy situations or if you have like uh, mossy rock that you're laying over, uh, this blends in really well. Uh, and that's why we use this one in particular. The hook of choice is the Monster Carp Tackle Universal Perfection size four. Um, size six will work for the 20 pound as well, but it's really hard to get it through the eye. Um, so if you're gonna use a size six hook, use the 15 pound uh, camo core. Um, that way you just won't have as, as much trouble getting it through the hook eye. Um, the reason I use these particular hooks is because they are in fact my favorite. Uh, really tough, strong hooks, really strong hook point. Uh, very rarely, like it does happen, but very rarely do I roll a hook point. Um, but the reason we're tying the multi-rig is because if those rare ch chances happen where the, the point has rolled uh, and it's just not sharp, the multi-rig lets you switch it out. So that's why we're, we're doing it this way. Uh, really, really good hook, love them. Next up, the Gardner Large Hook Aligner See-Through Brown. This is a major key to the way I tie this rig, uh, and it's really what's got me a lot of big fish this season, uh, certainly from July on. So this is an absolute essential part in the way I tie this rig. Next, the Corda non-reflective small rig rings. These things are super tiny, like, like stupid tiny. And the reason I go for them that small is because they add absolutely no weight to the to the rig. They really really don't make a difference um, when you're using the pop-up. If I were to use a larger rig ring, like I do have some that I'll use for a bottom bait, it'll it'll add that extra weight. It is noticeable. So small rig rings for the pop-ups. Uh, we're gonna just use a very small, not even a long one, just a short uh, anti-tangle sleeve. We'll be using an ESP clear hair stop to attach the bait to the rig ring. Just simply use dental floss. Um, you can go with flavored dental floss if you want, if you think that's gonna give you a bit of an edge. Um, sometimes I use just a, a piece of scrap braid from an old rig. Uh, really, whatever your personal preference is, but it's nice and cheap, easy to use, doesn't take up any space. So I use dental floss. I'll be using a relatively large split shot as well. Uh, you want to make sure it's nice and heavy to really make sure that it weights down everything you need to and holds that rig presenting properly. And the pop-up of choice is going to be the K1 Baits 15 millimeter high buoyancy pop-up in natural garlic. And it's a white color or slightly off white. So that's the gear. Let's put it all together. Okay, so the, for the first piece, we've taken our piece of hook link, that camo core hook link, and I've taken about a 10 inch piece. Um, it's quite long, but because of some of the folds that we have to put in it, it's, it's gonna eat some of that distance up, so it, it'll end up being much, much shorter. So, to get the right distance, um, a lot of times you'll see the multi-rig tied and it'll have this really long knot. 
and you know what it works for a lot of people it's it's just not the way that I like to see it um, I like to have it a little bit neater so I tend to measure it out by laying it folding it over making a little bit of a loop and laying it up against the hook and getting approximately well, maybe a third of the hook length past the, the bend and about the same past the eye that gives me plenty of room for any kind of give with the knot and making sure that the knot is not too far from the eye so what I tend to do is just kind of crimp that a little bit squeeze it so it kind of holds its shape and I turn it around for some reason I, I tend to tie the knot better the other way so I'm just gonna now that that's doubled over I'm going to fold it over and make a loop and then I bring in the splicing needle or boily needle whichever is handy just bring that through and just snug down the knot a little bit but not too tight and I just kind of roll the knot towards the tag end the idea is to get just enough to go over the bend of the hook or have just a little bit extra but not too much so I'm going to get my puller tool just get into that loop and now snug that knot down a little bit better I really don't take any extra care to make sure I don't break the coating because there is going to be a break in the coating near that knot anyways just gives it that little bit of extra movement so that's pretty neat and I'm going to just trim off that little tag end so now we've got essentially just the hook length and a big loop so that loop is going to stay pinched and we're going to push that through the bottom of the hook eye sometimes this can be a little bit tricky um, if I was using a size 6 it would be incredibly tricky I have gotten this same particular material through that eye size 4 usually goes through just fine of course it wants to give me a hard time right now there we go seventh times a charm right so now we've got that going through the bottom of the hook eye so the knot is just below it and as you can see we have enough going past the bend of the hook that it will go around the bottom but before we put that around we need to add our rig ring now I do have some ace rig rings that are much larger they will do the same job but I find that they because they're bigger they add a lot more weight to the rig and when I'm using a pop-up I, I don't want that if I was using a bottom bait I will use a larger rig ring a lot of the time just because that little bit of weight doesn't matter but let's see here so you should be able to see now we got the hook and the rig ring on that loop so I'm just gonna hold them together holding the knot of the loop right to the eye of the hook I want to make sure that I don't twist this loop around the hook at all and I'm just gonna pass it around or down over the bend so that it's, it's snugged up underneath so now we've got the knot right below the hook eye rig ring just above it and we've passed it around the bend and around the point of the hook so that we form this D over the back of the hook so the rig ring sits on top we got it nice and snug and like I said a lot of times you'll see this multi rig tied with the knot way down here again personal preference with how you're using the rig I put mine right up against the eye for the purpose of our next step which is the gardener hook aligner 
I'm just going to thread that on. Obviously you thread the wide end on first. The first time I used these I put it on backwards and couldn't figure out why I couldn't get it over the hook eye. So I again pull the knot right tight to the bottom of the hook, uh, right to the bottom of the hook eye, and I actually slide the hook aligner up over the knot and then up over the eye of the hook. Now this can be tricky and I'm probably getting out of focus here because you're pushing with this knot as well. But the tougher it is to slide that on, a lot of times it, it's, it's really helping to hold that rig in place. You know, you, you want that hook aligner to move as little as possible. So I tend to really push it on, make sure it's on there good. Probably overkill, but I find that it makes a difference for me. So essentially, we're more than halfway there. So as you can see, we've got the rig ring on the, the D, hook aligner giving a nice point down. You can use shrink tube. I have used shrink tube for this part, but if you use shrink tube, then you defeat the purpose of the multi-rig, which is to be able to pop your hook off and put it back on should you dull the point. And as I've said, on rare occasions, I have dulled the point fishing in really heavy rocks. Um, these hooks are usually good. I don't usually have that issue, but rare times it does happen. And with other brands of hooks, it, it happens as well. So shrink tube will work great, but you're going to have to retie the whole rig if you dull your point. You know, you get three or four fish, that can dull your point. So you're going to want to keep that sharp hook, swap it out as much as, uh, as you need. With shrink tube, tricky to do it. You've got to retie everything. With the hook aligner, I can pull it down, change the hook, put the hook aligner back up over, and we're good to go. So it makes it quick and easy. But having the knot right tight to the eye also helps hold the hook aligner in place. And it means I don't have any knots or anything like that below the hook. So now we've got that part ready. The next step is to slide on our little anti-tangle sleeve. This time we're going through the narrow end. Just let that hang down by the hook for the time being. So now we need to get our loop in the other end because that loop will be what we connect to our quick link swivel. You know, essentially the rest of our rig. So this is where you can really determine the length of your rig. I tend to use shorter rigs once we get into the colder months. Um, you know, I want that, that fast indication right away so, you know, they pick it up and feel the lead right away, immediately get that jerk reaction to take off. In the summertime when they're being a little bit more aggressive and moving around, I don't mind having a little bit of extra extra length on there for them to hang themselves, but because they're going to be biting shy in the winter, I want instant connection. So I'm going to just tighten this down a little bit so that it's a little bit shorter. Whole rig maybe six or seven inches long in, at, at max. A lot of times it'll be down to about five. So I'm just doubling it over and just a simple overhand loop knot. So ex almost exactly the same, well, it is exactly the same knot as we did first to make the loop for our multi-rig. Difference is, is that this time, it's not going through and cooperating as easy as it did the first time. Come on. So there you go. And I just slide it down the shaft of the needle just to tighten that up a bit. Now I do trim this excess tag end, but not much. I usually leave about anywhere from a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Just so that when you do have it loose, that tag end can catch that anti-tangle sleeve if it slides down while you're working with it, because that can always be tucked into the sleeve neatly. And then you can just connect this loop onto your quick link swivel. So that right there 
is how I would use this for a bottom bait rig. Just, just like this. Wouldn't even necessarily put a, a break in the coating. This will work really well. Um, you know, nice semi-stiff. It's still quite supple and it will lay down over material uh, on the bottom very easily. But it's just got that slight rigidity, that semi-stiffness uh, to help it really kick away from the rig or from your lid. So now, because we're going to be setting this up for a pop-up, I am going to take a split shot. And I usually like to put, you know, I've got some really really big fingers but I tend to go about a finger length below the tip of the hook aligner to where I'm gonna put my shot this is a larger shot it's, it's not just like a small one that I would use um, you know if I was float fishing or something just a pair of hemostats to just just crimp that down a little bit if you crimp it too tight um, I, I find that it it really does a number on your hook link by crimping it just enough to close it, if you get enough tension on there or you get into weed or a snag or something like that, a lot of times the slit shot will come off uh, with that little bit of pressure. So I, I don't crimp it down all the way, just enough to hold it on there. And then I just, using my thumbnail, I pinch it right, right between the hook and the split shot, but right at the edge of the hit split shot. And I just put a little break in the coating. Just go all the way around it. And it just gives it that little bit of a hinge, a little bit of play. And that right there is the rig. So now all we have left to do is attach the bait. So for that, cut a piece of dental floss. So get a hold of the rig ring. And to start off with, the first thing I do is pass the floss through the rig ring and I do one overhand granny knot trying to keep both sides of the floss the same length or approximately the same length just that way it's not going to move around as much kind of flopping it around everywhere so now that I've got that tied the next step would be to get my pop-up so again one of those little 15 mil white garlic pop-ups give it a violent stabbing with the boiling needle just be careful of your fingers and I kind of just tend to hold the hook between these two fingers and then hold the floss between my index finger and thumb and go about 20 millimeters up from the rig ring and it doesn't matter if you're using a gate latch needle or a boiling needle or a splicing needle. Um, I just keep the tension on the two and then fold them inward as I pass the pop-up down. And then I kind of get something like that. So I snug that right down to the ring, but not over the ring. So it's, I'm not sure if you can see that. So you've got the hook, the ring, you can clearly see everything, and then the pop-up but no space on the floss between the ring and the pop-up. Nice and snug there. Now I do another overhand knot at this stage. A lot of times the floss twists so it can be a little bit tricky. And this is absolutely horrendous to do in the cold. So if you're going to be fishing in the colder months, you know, if you're in the bivy, keep it nice and warm. But really you should be doing this at home before you head out. Um, just cold hands tying rigs is just not pleasant. So I'm going to tie my second overhand knot, but I'm not going to cinch it all the way down. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap for the boilie stop. Now I have seen a lot of guys that won't bother with the boilie stop. They just tie a couple of knots down and then melt the bait floss with a lighter. Um, whatever your personal preference is, I feel more confident that the bait is going to stay on my rig with a boilie stop. Just get that. You've tightened it down. We're going to do probably two more overhand knots if it cooperates. Just to make sure that that's on there. This one, that's 
I got two over top of it, that's good this time. So now I've got a little bit of extra floss and a little bit of extra boily stop. So I'm going to trim this stop. So I only have the one piece. I'm going to trim the tag ends of the floss about an eighth or sixteenth of an inch from the stop. And this is where I take the lighter and just melt down the ends so that the overhand knots don't come through. Finally, you can kind of see how above the pop-up the boilie stop does kind of stick up a little bit. So I take the back end of a boilie needle and I just snug that in to make it a little bit neater so it's not sticking out as much. So now we have it nice and neat so it's still right tight to the rig ring but there's nothing sticking out on top so it's all the pop-up at that stage. And that is our finished pop-up rig or multi-rig that I use with the pop-up. And again, the only difference, if I was using a bottom bait, I'd take the split shot off and not put a, a break in the coating. But there we go. Hey, for more videos like you just saw, just click on the links right over here. And to subscribe to our channel and keep up with the latest updates and newest videos, just click the logo on the screen.